acknowledgement and acknowledge that the press and the public have been duly notified of the meeting in accordance with the Freedom of Information Act. First order of business is approval of previous meetings minutes from July the 12th, 2021. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 No opposed. I'd also like to uh, express that we do have all members of the committee here today along with uh, Desiree Fragoso, our city administrator. Um, next item of business is citizens' comments. Do we have any citizens' comments that were written? No, I, nobody signed up to speak. Nobody signed up to speak. Now, we do have one visitor here in the room today. That's Dr. James Smiley. Mr. Smiley, would you care to make any comments? No problem. Okay, thank you. Thank you for being here also. Uh, any marina tenants' comments, Desiree? Okay. All right. We'll move on to old business. So these are going to be, I think, probably pretty brief updates here today because we just met three weeks ago. Plus, we just had city council ways and means the week before that. And we had some good updates on some of these capital improvement uh, projects. So, uh, Desiree, I'll just ask you to go down the list on this. Uh, item A, update on Marina Dock Rehabilitation Project. Any Anything new going on there that we need to add? Yes, I do want to add a couple of items. Um, since our last um, meeting where I provided a capital project subject, um, including the dock rehabilitation. So the electrical work on both the phase dock and the restaurant dock, which are what were the section that were uh, replaced, that is about 98% completed. Um, they will start pulling cable for the charter dock, which is going to be the second phase in construction um, sometime this week. Dominion Energy needs to come back and uh, put plugs on secondary transformers so that the new transformer that was replaced can go live uh, sometime this week. And also connect the pedestal and um, all pedestals in, on both, both sections of dock. So that's also expected to happen um, this week. All water lines to the, to the pedestals have been connected. Um, on those two sets of docks. They're still waiting on some hose to connect the fire line, as well as some of the standpipe risers that are installed um, in the dock. Salmons is still waiting on some parts from Structure Marine, uh, particularly the um, cover plates for some of the utility trays. Those haven't arrived yet. Um, they had a meeting, Salmons contractor with Structure Marine, they had a meeting today at 10. I haven't received any feedback back, uh, back from them on where, when the estimated time of arrival of some of those materials are, but I'm expecting to receive that by the end of the day um, at the latest tomorrow. Um, they are still <coughs> targeting mid-August for turning over the restaurant and the face stock over to Brian um, for to start using it and, and, and sort of going by. Um, that is pending, obviously, the weather. We're expecting some rain this week, and that may delay that schedule, but they have been um, instructed and encouraged to work through any um, potential issues to make sure that by mid-August, that section has been um, turned over for public use, and they can start demolishing the charter dock, which is phase two of construction. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Kevin. Um, I realize that these are our docks, um, but when Brian takes over, is there going to be some kind of walkthrough with Salmons that everything's complete and there's somewhat of an acceptance by Brian? So he knows, we know that everything's done, that two, three weeks after he's now watching these things, he's not pointing something that he might have created unintentionally he's pointing it back at Salmons. So there will be some kind of walkthrough yes. and sign off that we agree and Brian agrees that everything, all cleats, everything is in place. We will have a final walkthrough as the phases are completed and turned over and those will be attended by myself, Brian, I'm sure Tyler, the dock master and um, KPM, the engineering, they're the ones who designed it. So they'll be the first one that I'm going to look at to make sure that the construction meets the, the design with the contractor as well. Gotcha. Perfect. Thank you. Um, the Good only question. other thing that I wanted to add is um, we 
we're still waiting on a confirmation for the design of the fuel dock, which is dock area A, that's the last section. Um, I, I uh, noticed to you, uh, indicated to you all that we have received the final, um, uh, what would you call it? The final drawings, the final um, as built from Structural Marine that have been reviewed by APM. So that's still, that's still being discussed and evaluated with both Structural Marine, Salmons, and APM. Um, and hopefully by ways and means, I can give you all uh, an update on where we are with fuel, fuel dock area A um, by the 70s. Okay. That's all I have for the Marina Dock Project. Okay. Any other questions? Um, one yeah, one more. So I, I'm glad you brought up as builds. So they will provide us as builds for everything, the dock, the, the electrical, the water. So we'll know where everything is exactly how it's been built. I am 99% confident that the contract specification <coughs> required as built being provided, we typically okay. do. But let me double check on that and I'll let you know. I'll, you know all of you all by email afterwards and also included in my report the ways and means. Um, but yes, I would I would say that yeah. Yeah, yeah, I would think that, that we get a complete set of hot goals after after everything's been completed. Yeah, I think that would be a, a very important sure. part. Yeah. Thanks. Yes, Josh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, related question. Um, just thinking about some of the deferred maintenance on our older buildings and the um, not great job we've done as a city in terms of of keeping up with maintenance. Now we're gonna have new docks, new equipment, new all kinds of different products out there. What what kind of maintenance schedule will we have at the completion of this project as it relates to anything that's really you know something something that we need to have either annual or you know every five years or something like that? I, I just don't recall seeing any of that in in our contracts with ATM Restructuring Marine or Yeah, that's not included something we did include with the public safety building project. We asked them for a full maintenance schedule. Um, we didn't with the Marina Dock. However, I think that's, yes, that's something that we should request. Um, you know, the city, whether it's something that we require and request of Brian, because he is responsible for any normal and, and routine maintenance of the dock, we are responsible for any extraordinary repairs or replacements. Um, so I would say that that would be something that we want to request and require of Brian to us as he's responsible for maintaining our assets. Um, so let me think about. Uh, just to just to note, um, I would start with Structure Marine since they're the, the manufacturers of most of this equipment. They should have those records um, pretty well documented internally. It shouldn't be anything really additional for them to say, here's that. And, and that way we can, I, I would say it should start there versus with Brian. Uh, because he needs to take guidance from the manufacturer of the equipment um, versus telling telling us what he thinks should be done. Okay. Which is certainly educated. I'm not saying that, but they made well, it. Yeah. What I'll do is just so that we keep this conversation in the pipeline. Um, if you don't mind, we can add it to the agenda for next month. Yes, please do, um, Desiree. Please. And those are good, those are great questions, guys. Ones that we <laughs> need to make sure we have buttoned up and the answers for going forward. Any other questions? Okay. All right, let's move on to the, uh, uh, one, one other thing, this is a little bit off subject, I guess, with the, the current dock rehabilitation, but uh, in regards to the uh, holdover tenants dock, I ask you a question over the weekend in regards to, to that project uh, as to when they may be AD compliant. We have that in the budget for a few years from now. So the improvements to the other two docks that are in place and not part of this overall Marina dock rehabilitation project, I don't have the budget here with me, but um, I believe that it's, it's scheduled for FY24. So those permits are good for five years. They can mm -hmm. be extended for five more years if requested by the city. Um, it has to be granted by the permitting agency, but it's usually not very difficult to do that. Um, and But I can go back and just confirm when that's forecasted. Right. So that's something that is in our 10-year capital plan um, for replacement. And I, I believe that the T 
Key Dog, the one that's half the restaurant and half marina operations, that one's scheduled first just because of its condition compared to the, um, the dock that's being occupied by Tidal Wave that would be made into a public dock um, mm -hmm. per council once the holdover tenant vacates. Right, okay. Uh, and that's certainly something that council can choose to change. Yeah, that's where I was going with it because I know that even if we've got a placeholder for that, we can still yeah. bring that up to council if we need to expedite that, do something differently and see if we can move that forward. Absolutely. Need be. The permit's in place. It would just be allocating funds for its construction. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Let's move on to item B, update on the Marina Restaurant Renovation by Marker 116 LLC. Anything new? Yeah, so I received a note from Chrissy. Unfortunately, they weren't able to attend tonight, today's meeting, but they sent me some pictures that I'll share with you all later today um, and an update. Um, so I'll just share with you what I've received. They have um, received the 16 foot tall 8 by 8 wood columns, and those have been installed. You recall them mentioning that there was a huge backlog mm -hmm. um, for, for that material that's been installed. The second floor rear porch framing has been completed as well. The exterior dining room wall connecting to the second second floor porch was all, has also been completed. Um, they're now going to start replacing the metal roof over the dining room. And the next items that they're going to be working on are replacing the HVAC unit and fixing the flat roof holding those units. Um, and electrical work going on, going to continue now that the roof is completed. Um, I also wanted to let you know that we are having our first meeting with the owner's representative who's overseeing the construction of the Marina restaurant on our behalf um, this week. He has already submitted a report based on his findings so far, and we have shared those with the, um, with the contractor, with the, the, the restaurant contractor, and we'll be reviewing that report. I see whether there's any deficiencies that need to be addressed um, by, by their contractor. And uh, they're also in the process of uh, providing to our owner's representative the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing final drawings so that um, Insight Group can review those before any, uh, any installation is finalized. Are those, going, are those going to be weekly meetings that you have? Okay. The, the, the inspectors per se go sporadically. They, they don't, they just show up. They mm -hmm. don't necessarily schedule it ahead of time, but we want that to be the case. Right. Um, and, you know, this Friday I was doing my weekly you know, well, drive and, and looking at some of the areas around the island, and they were there. I saw that they were, they were at the Molina restaurant um, walking, walking around and, inspecting some work. So that's that's ongoing. I just wanted to give you all an update on, on those um, efforts. Okay. Any questions, Kevin or John? Mm. No, sir. Okay. It's a heck of a view from down there. We got a chance to to look at that and uh recently and it's uh that's gonna be a that's a beautiful spot. I mean once they get that completed it's gonna be a view second to none down there. Really can hardly we may, wait. We may need to you know have some real property meetings over there. Uh, I think you're right. <laughs> it cools down yeah. a little bit. <laughs> Doing a 130 minute. All right, let's move on to uh, item C update on the proposed public dock and green spaces to Isle of Palms Marina. So That's right. You know, this is pending adjudication by the court on the eviction proceedings. Um, we are, as I've reported to you all, the city has reintroduced a motion for summary judgment. Um, for the judge to rule on that, we're waiting on his decision. Um, and in lieu, you know, in response to the Hung trial, the mistrial that was um, that happened on first week of July, we have several dates that we have provided to the court on our availability and our attorney's availability in the event that we have to do a good trial again. Um, that you know, the court knows our availability, so that hasn't yet been confirmed. And I'm suspecting that that will be confirmed once the judge rules on the motion, the city's motion for summary judgment. Okay. But other than that, we're sort of on hold with the proposals that we've received for the, for the final design and the de development of specs so that we can go out for bid. Um, 
they're at a point where if we don't want to move forward and spend any any monies yet until we know what the future is going to hold for that for that um, piece of property mm -hmm. and we're where we, we can be without having to spend any money right but if i remember correctly you've, got, you've had three firms that have already yeah. expressed interest in, in, in working with us on that once we have the go ahead and can do that Correct. Right. okay questions <clears throat> all right we'll wait on that business to be uh finalized okay and then item d update on the ada beach access improvements desiree anything so what i'll Based on what this committee recommended last month, um, a couple weeks ago, as Chair Friedman said, um, the committee is recommending that rather than the city pursuing the installation of a new boardwalk of 42nd, that the city pursue that on 34A, which is another location that the city's identified that would be feasible for an ADA compliant boardwalk. Um, we have, I have executed an order to get that area that Beach Access Pass surveyed. We are about, that, I did that a couple of weeks ago, and at that time they said that we had a six week um, uh, time frame between getting, you know, getting the, the um, up through the PO and getting them out here. So we should be at about three to four weeks um, out to getting it surveyed, and that's the first step to, to you know, before designing anything in that area. Um, I'm also um, working with our public works folks on a more consistent and deliberate maintenance and improvement schedule for all the beach boardwalks. Um, there are some boardwalks that have, beach access has, I'm sorry, that have the Moby mat that require a lot more uh, maintenance. For example, 9th Avenue is one that as of Today, they've already gone out there four times, we lifted, graded, and put it back off. Um, they've done that at 42nd Avenue just once. What I want to make sure is that we have a consistent schedule where they're inspected, if sections of the movie mat have to be replaced or replaced, we always have an inventory in, of movie mat in public works. Um, and to ensure that each movie mat area is lifted, regraded, and flattened at least quarterly. So we're in the process of developing that. And we don't know, you know, again, it's gonna depend on the area because Ninth Avenue, we know that because of the conditions there, it, it takes more, it takes, uh, it takes a, a more often, I guess, approach to getting it, to getting it flat. Is that because of traffic uh, or Shifting sand, or what? What causes that to be more it's maintenance? Traffic, wind patterns. I mean, I don't, you know, Ninth Avenue is one that does require a little bit more. Um, but so that's that's what we're doing, and I know that you you and I have had some conversations about the city pursuing um, working with OCRM on some type of. Um, language to suggest or present to the legislature to allow or make have some amendments to state code that would allow OCRN to permit moving maps extending past the um, toe of the juvenile seaboard left on side. Um, I, I think that city council would fully support that and this is an opportunity for the city to um, be at the forefront of that and, and draft some legislation for our representatives to uh, introduce when the when they go back to session and committee start meeting early next next year. Okay, we've we've had some I mean, we've had some really good input and some cooperation on that so far. I met with Joe Bustos last week, and I know he's had some conversation also with Dr. Smiley, who is in the audience today too, because this has been a passion of Dr. Smiley's as well, of ADA compliance, and and Representative Bustos is all on board and you know, moving forward with that, but that is next year. In the meanwhile, you know, if we, if there's anything that we can do to help nudge OCRM to allow us to extend the Moby mat, you know, then that would, without legislation, that would be good too. I mean, I don't know how open they are to that, uh, but it certainly would be something that uh, I would like to personally like to see us pursue in terms of the city, you know, just putting it out there and say, you know, we've got 
all this soft sand here, you know, and we're 80 compliant up to the seaward toe, whatever, however, however that's defined. But, you know, but at least have an open mind as to what we could do to be even more compliant for the disabled because there is so much soft sand. I mean, 40 second, it's like dozens of yards. I mean, to get to any hard pack at all. Um, so, you know, let's, let's definitely look at that. And I think, I think you got a copy of some of the, you know, maybe in draft form of what the legislation might look like. Did I send that to you? I, don't think that I know. Okay. I, I'll, I'll get that to you. And that, and that's, again, has been some discussion I've had with Dr. Smiley as well, because he's done some really good research on that. And I'll make sure you get that. And maybe that'll give you kind of a basis for what we ought to be looking at in terms of helping representative Bustos with, you know, draft legislation. And, and also he was going to, I'm talking about Representative Bustos, he was also going to get with uh, uh, the liaison in the legislative side and tell them, you know, instruct them as to what he's looking at doing and have them go ahead and get some work done on that as well. So they might be drafting something on their own. So, any, yes. Thank you, Mr. Sorry. Chair. Just a, uh, I guess, to com a comment and a question um, because we, and I'm going to look at Dr. Smiley for some affirmation on this, but what you're what you're referring to the extension of whether it be boardwalks or moby mats across the the toe of the dune into the hard sand we, i think we, what we're saying is we believe that is the most meaningful impact we can make for creating better access to the beach out of anything that we could do that's where the the biggest impact we could make and i think we heard from from patricia i think was her name right um, mm -hmm. she, um as well and that was that was definitely the sentiment that came from from her and intuitively it seems pretty logical like you can create really great boardwalks, but if you can't get past the next several yards, then what is what help does it provide? So that comment being made, um, I wonder if, uh, and this might be a question for, um, for Joe Bustos or something for you to consider, maybe this is where we do look for some PR assistance. If something like passing a resolution as a city and saying, you know, we believe that this should be true and that the state agencies involved should act accordingly to create better access for folks with disabilities, then let's take that action. It might be the other way around. It, it could be that that makes us, I, I don't know how, what the impact of something like that would be. Um, if we can generate some more news though, generate some more grassroots support from the broader community, because I think this is something that would have broad community support and whatever we can do to get people writing state agencies, writing other elected officials so that there's kind of you know, this is something a lot of people can get behind, and I don't feel like uh, I've never heard an explanation from OCRM as to why there's no there's no good reason why it just that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. And if we can at least, it, maybe there's a great reason why, and they just it, it's a secret. But let's figure, <laughs> let's find out. I think it's just it's not it's not spelled out in the, in the law. They're very much black and white, and because I as a resident of Asheville, I have been asked the same question: Is there any environmental impact that extending that? to the dry sand creates and they haven't answered that mm -hmm. in a way that makes you believe that there is anything other than it's just not spelled out in the, in the law. It's the way we've always done things. Mm -hmm. want, yeah, exactly. So I, that's why I, I'm, I'm hopeful and encouraged that I don't think that we're going to get any pushback from the staff at OCRM. They just want to declare that the, that the law that they refer to when making these um, approvals you know, supports their actions. And if that's changed, then I think we can only forward in a way that's productive and helpful for those folks. Right. To John's point, though, I think it would be good, and and I, I'm thinking all of us would probably agree to this, if we do at least go down the path, no pun intended, of putting a resolution in place, you know, to really try to push this forward, get some, you know, some some public effort out there, you know, get people involved, and, you know, and it really is about helping, you know, uh, the helping people with disabilities and, uh, you know, and, and being even more compliant on this island and being in the forefront of it, if you will. I mean, we know that Hilton Head on their own extended some Moby Bat, uh, you know, a while back, but I don't think they had the necessary uh, approvals at the time, but they did it. And, uh, uh, you know, and we're probably not going to get it all the way down to the hard packed sand, but anything we could do to get more Moby Mat through that really soft sand, the better off we would be. And uh, Kevin, have you got anything to add at this point? <clears throat> no, sir. 
Okay, I, in, in another another area, I'd really like to see us look into Desiree would be the uh, the big wheel chairs. You know, I know that I guess the county park has some available, one or two. I guess the beach chair rental companies have them available. Uh, but when you do some research as to what some other beach communities have done, Fernandita Beach comes to mind. Again, Dr. Smiley had sent me this a while back, but I mean, they have, I mean, they have a, a, an all encompassing approach as to what they did in their beach community and got citizens involved in, you know, making sure that they have uh, uh, more compliance ADA wise. And, uh, you know, they have, uh, you know, of course the big, the big wheel, the big wheel uh, chairs available. Carolina Beach in North Carolina is another one that comes to mind. Uh, that does that. So it's it's something that we ought to really take a look at, uh, and and how that would look. I mean, if we had in doing a little research on these big wheel sand chairs that are PVC pipe, and it, they're not that costly. They really aren't. And, and you know, and, and they they come apart. You know, you can disassemble them, but it may be something that we could have available. Maybe at the you know the fire department, public safety building, because somebody's there all the time. You know. We, we looked at this a couple of years ago, uh -huh. and um, the reason why this was early on in my tenure here, but I recall there being some issue with where to store these beaches. I don't think you know, the, the, the cost is not an issue. It's just not having enough space, even in the public safety building, storage space that would have had that would allow us to have one or two or three or however, however many we interpret. At that time, I recall that there were some discussions about the city having a partnership with one of the local vendors where folks could, who need a beach accessible, uh, beach accessible wheelchair would, um, would get it from some of these vendors and the city would reimburse the cost of that. And having a, 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 some type of agreement with this vendor and the city would get it at a lower cost um, or, you know, and I, I, I think it, did, it didn't really get anywhere um, at that point. I, I don't know why. Um, there is a, some resistance of some sort of partnering with one, one company and not the other, but only one vendor I, I understand has those devices um, uh, available for people to rent. That may be another option um, if the city wants to establish a program for, for that. I mean, all, all we want to make sure is that it's accessible and available to people who need it, whether it's provided by the city or provided by another vendor for the user is the availability that matters. So that's, um, again, another option that you all may want to Google on and see whether you would be supportive of that. Um, rather than, you know, relying on the city to, you know, to, to think about how we would work, the city would have to um, deliver that to the beach access path. And yes, at public safety building, we have folks 24 seven, but what if, in, what if they're in a call and they're tied up for several hours and that delivery is, we can't meet it for whatever reason. Um, it's just, I worry about the unreliableness, if that's even a word, of, of us operating a, a program like that and the storage component. But um, there might be other options that we haven't fully, fully um, researched and embraced yet. Well, I think, you know, it's in, in the case of Carolina Beach, I mentioned, uh, there was a video, that, again, that Dr. Smiley had sent me, and I watched it over the weekend, and this young man that uh, had been in an automobile accident had no use of his lower extremities, and they went to the rec center. The rec center had them there. They had an appointment. They show up at a specified time. They got their wheelchair, disassembled it, put it in a car, went down to the beach, and, of course, he had his assistants. you got to have assistance for those. You don't roll them yourself. And, uh, you know, so there is some planning, in it, you know, and it, it's it, it I would just like to see us pursue every pathway we could. I think what we heard two meetings ago from that lady and her husband was touching to all of us as to how they had a di very difficult time getting down to the beach. Uh, and I, I think that's something that for myself anyway, and I'm thinking that probably the other committee members would agree. 
that we ought to exhaust every option we can to see what we could do to really be more accommodating. And I think it's something that from a, you know, the right thing to do, plus it's just, I think, good for the community, good for the visitors that visit our beach. And, uh, you know, uh, if we could do some more work on that, I, I would certainly appreciate it. Could you get back to us on some ideas on that? And, and I'll make sure any information I've gotten that I might not have forwarded to you, Desiree, I'll make sure you get it, just FYI. And then you can distribute it. Probably best for me to give it to you than you distribute it to other committee members, the way we operate around here. So I kind of like the idea of partnering with mm -hmm. one of the companies. You know, the umbrella chair company, uh -huh. they're up and down Palm Boulevard right. all day long. The bikes, the bike guy who uh, rents out the bikes is up and down all the time. I, I'm sure we can figure something out. The only the only downside I can think of is that, but don't they close down for a period of time during the winter though? I mean, people still come to the beach even in the winter time. So if you have a beach chair rental company company, if they're they're yeah. down for a few months, and I don't I don't know that they are, but if they're down for a few months, that may not be an option. I see those umbrellas year round. Yeah, I think they. I think they're still. Do they? As okay. long as people are renting beach houses. Okay. I think they reduce their staffing. Oh yeah, I'm sure of that. Season, but I, I don't think that they uh, stop operating altogether. Okay. Can, okay. Check as part of our report. All right. Very good. Any other input? Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Under new business discussion and consideration of property insurance options for the new marina docks. Desiree, I'll turn that over to you. I know that you have some things you want to cover with us here. Yeah, um, so as promised, we um, I, I gave you all a, a, a spreadsheet that shows the um, information or the details of some of the proposals that we have received from several insurance carriers. Um, at the top, you can see what we currently hold for, again, the two docks that are uh, in the marina that are not being replaced as part of this project. Um, we have a, a total annual cost of $35,000 for about $364,000 um, worth of insured value. So what we're looking at, and I, I don't think we need to get into the nitty gritty details, nitty gritty, nitty gritty details of each proposal. What overall we'll look, we're looking at is our goal is to properly insure those docks for all perils, including flood, including wind and name storm. We're looking at an average between $225,000 to $260,000 of annual premiums um, for full coverage of the $4.8 uh, $4 million worth of replacement value for the docks once they're completed. Um, so that percentage is between four and 6% of insured of replacement value, not insured value, replacement value. Um, at the last meeting, we talked about at what point does this become unaffordable or just not, not very feasible in the future and whether or not the city should consider self-insuring for some perils. While I think that that would be a good strategic plan moving forward and, and, and setting ourselves up to, to be at a position to be able to do that in the future, I don't think we can, that would be a, a, a smart option to take on today. Um, because again, we have been seeing a lot of activity in uh, hurricane activity in the past seven, eight years. Um, in all likelihood, we'll see more of that and even more intensity with hurricanes. And that is where our biggest risk is. It's not all other perils because of how well these docks are constructed and, um, you know, they're properly engineered, properly installed. However, they are built to resist winds of up, up to 104 miles per hour. So that's roughly a category two hurricane. Anything above that, you know, I'm not saying that they will fall apart, but that it makes them a little bit more, um, it, thre it threatens their integrity, the structural integrity, uh, could threaten the structural integrity a little bit more. Um, the current budget for FY22 
include the hundred and fifty thousand dollars of premium. Um, that was a placeholder because by the time that we were building the budget, we knew that the premiums were going to increase based on the new um, improved um, and, and higher replacement value. Um, but we again didn't know how much it would be. Um, and something that we were we looked at is what if the city only wanted to cover all other perils, including wind, name, storm, and flood. Um, the Municipal Association of South Carolina is, uh, we're working through with them about getting, um, whether or not they would insure all other perils through our current property insurance, they cover all of our other buildings. Um, and they give us an estimate of about $23,000 of annual premium just for all other perils, excluding um, the other, the other um, um, wind, hail, earthquake, and flood. So that's certainly an option. I don't think it's the right option. I think that you know the community would expect the city to properly insure as much as we can this new asset. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you think about it this way, a self-insurance option. If we, if the city started a funding a sinking fund today, and save two hundred thousand dollars a year for the next however many years, it would take us twenty-four years to have four hundred four point eight million dollars which would be it's today's replacement value. Um, so those are things that we have to weigh um, in making this decision. Um, certainly the city can afford it. Um, it would be more than what we budgeted, but it, it, it seems to me that we don't have a ton of options today um, to ensure that they're properly insured. Although I think it would be a good option to look forward and, and situate work work towards a situation where the city would be financially in a position to properly self insure. I guess that's um, I'll open it up for questions and inner reaction to what I've provided to you all. Okay. Uh, oh, before that, I just just one thing. You, you'll see that the deductibles um, vary. We have 200, 250,000. We're waiting back on um, some more information from some of these insurance carriers, what the premiums would look like if we increase that deductible to half a million and even a million dollars. And we've asked for both options. Right now, the deductibles range between 200 and 250,000 dollars. So, I mean, it's, it would be proper to think that the deductibles would, that the premiums would go down if the deductible goes up. But, but you hopefully, I'm sure, I'm hoping that I have all that information Okay, great, great. Any input, Kevin? Two two hundred twenty thousand, two hundred fifty thousand sure sounds a whole lot better than five hundred thousand. So you're heading in the right direction. Mm -hmm. uh, just a, a comment. I think you're you're um, you're doing a good job in terms of putting the context of this discussion around self insurance, present day versus future. The only thing that's missing from this analysis for me, in addition to the addition, the alternative deductible considerations, would be looking at the self-insurance option. And I, I mean, essentially, we, we kind of need to make a plan for how we want to, A, do we want to get there? And it sounds like from, from what I heard from uh, Kevin earlier, that's the trend in Marinos. It's, and we kind of already heard that from, from ATM. That the trend is self-insuring because deductibles and premiums are so high. That being the case, I don't think this is going to get better. That you know, this is for one year. Next year, the rates we don't know what the rates are going to be. So we have to assume rates are going to go up each year, possibly a lot. We haven't had a major storm here locally, and you know, should we should we have one in the near future? I could increase the impact rates a whole lot. All that all that to say, we need to have this recommendation from from our committee to council needs to be a little bit more long-term, not just here. Obviously we have to solve the immediate term. We've got to have coverage right away. So I get that. I understand the, appreciate the urgency. We should, we should go ahead and make sure we, we layer it with, here's the short term. We've got to have some coverage. We're moving in the right direction from a premium standpoint. And here's how, here's kind of the 20 year, 15 year, whatever goal to be fully self-insured. And the, the plan is probably to reduce coverage each, you know, you can kind of toggle down. Coverage as as one account grows, you know, we'll, we'll 
we'll get there at some point. Yeah, we can start reducing the insured value um, right. as our fund um, thinking of whatever we call it uh, fund goes up. Right. Yeah. Certainly, we can add that to the Okay. Uh, do you need a motion of some kind from us? No, sir. Okay. Well, I mean, I think that are, are we all in agreement that, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll continue to pursue a, a, the best the best option based on all the proposals that we've received and present that to Ways and Means. Um, Ways and Means meet on, meets on the 17th, and right now we're, the first phase of the doc is supposed to be completed by mid-August, so we'll have to make a decision for that first phase. And the idea, which I'm really glad most of these insurers have agreed to um, add on the second and third phase, add them on to the policy as they're completed, because right now they're covered through our builder's risk, but they get off of the builder's risk policy if they are completed. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but also, you all know, builder's risk is excludes flood when it's <laughs> limited. Um, so, so when Doc C is completed, all the extra work that's being done and waiting for the parts, then it comes off builder's risk at that point after correct. we've done the walkthrough and signed off. Correct. Okay. The, the, the day that they become available for public use, that's the day that they get um, they're, um, removed from builders. So there is a sense of urgency here that we need that, to address this. Yeah. For that first thing. Right. Okay. And that's why you see the replaced insured value. And two, mm -hmm. some of them have the 2.1, 2.2, because that's what we're estimating that third phase to be worth. Right. Right. Um, but we, we ultimately, we'll have the expense of the full annual premium for the full value of the VDOC. Which is $4.8 billion or so. Yes, sir. I have a quick yes. question. Yes, Kevin. So when they are put into play, when people can start tying up to them, where, where does the general liability insurance come in? Do, are we, do we have an overall policy of general liability for the city and then that piece is just bolted onto that policy or do we have to have a separate general liability policy for those docks being used? We, we currently have general liability coverage um, for citywide. It includes all of our assets, so that's already covered. Okay. Uh, Brian is also required, required to have um, Insurance liability uh, as well. And there's limits listed in his. Uh, so somebody insurance. slips on the dock. We're covered. We're, we're okay. Correct. Uh, this is property insurance. Got it. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Under miscellaneous business, uh, we have next meeting date scheduled at 1 30 p.m. Monday, September the 13th. Is that good for everybody? Good for me. And again, I want to thank Dr. Smiley for being in attendance today in the audience of one of our fine residents here on the island. No executive session is needed. So do I hear a motion? Motion to adjourn. to adjourn. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 aye.